Hey guys, Taro here, and today we're going to be looking at the Spring Update Balance Preview Changelog. Fortunately, an earlier version of this was leaked by a community member, but we're going to be looking at the official ones, which have probably been changed quite a lot since then. So, general changes, squad formations, drift cap rate removed. What's causing the garrison bug? Okay, then we've got to get rid of that. Arrow formation removed, replaced with paratrooper formation. Okay, and squad AI removed due to player complaints. So yeah, I think the idea behind them adding squad AI in the last patch was to make it so that when squads left cover, say they got hit by like a mortar shell right at the exact point they left heavy cover and the whole squad died, squad AI enabled perhaps only three of the four members would leave cover at their exact time. And then the fourth one would leave slightly later, which would then result if, and if the mortar shell landed at the exact time, the last model would survive and then the squad would survive. But it just led to units feeling unresponsive and uh, things better, better off. So those are good changes. OKW slash M3 medkits. To make OKW faction less reliant on its medical truck upgrade, resolve an existing exploit and improve Forward healing capabilities following changes have been made. So the medkits are going to heal all squads in a radius around the medkit. Duration 30 seconds. Not sure what the difference is. Is that a longer duration? I'm not sure what that changed. Cost increased to 45 munitions. So, you know, now if you have a... Oh yeah, I could... I, you could do the medkit exploit where when you still can. Maybe I shouldn't be telling you about this, but if you select like a whole bunch of squads, move them really close to the med kit, and then just right click on the med kit, quite often you can get about three squads with one uh, OKW med kit at the moment. But uh, obviously that's not very common knowledge for players. So they just want to make it. So mm -hmm. obviously they can't, or they can't, couldn't fix that. So it's going to make it a middle ground. So the cost is going up a little bit. But you know, quite often as OKW, you're kind of blobbing, so you're probably going to get like three squads every time. So overall, this is going to probably be a munitions uh, saving if you were playing with the med kits conventionally before. Okay, uh, USCF M83 cluster bombs. The following change has been made to decrease instant squad wipes while still conducting damage to squads caught unawares. Scatter changes and drop height changes. So I imagine the drop height is going to be raised so the bombs will land a little bit more slowly. Because you really have to com compare this ability to the uh, fragmentation bombs in Austria. And fragmentation bombs, I think, I can't remember how much this ability costs. I think it's like 110, is it? 110, 130, something like that. Fragmentation bombs are 180, I'm not pretty sure. They cover a lower area and they drop it like a similar speed. So obviously these cluster bombs were a lot lot stronger, so it looks like they're going to try to tone them down a little bit. So that's uh, nice. And already that command is very strong, so it's not like it needs like a super OP off map as well. Anyway, British Commando Doctrine Assault. Come on, this is one of my favorite commanders, so I'm excited for the Brits, that is. Well, then changes have been made to make its uh, cost and value and increase the usability. So, weapon accuracy from 1.15 to 1.25. Okay, so boost in accuracy. The boost no longer applies to units in combat. So if they start taking damage, they're going to stop sprinting. I think that's a change perhaps that they're going to make to a lot of those things, like form other Russian Valiant Assault as well, but cross that bridge when we get to it speed boost yeah okay we did that cost reduced from 80 to 70 wow that's actually going to make it very affordable and recharge time increased from 90 to 120 so yeah they don't want people like just constantly activating these abilities and just sprinting around the map continuously going to increase the recharge time overall very good changes there smoke raid Activation delay from 10 seconds to 5 seconds. Probably going to make this a little bit more responsive and a bit more useful in like uh, 
well, combat situations basically. You don't have like a recon plane where you can then pop the smoke raid down and get some good usage out of it. Being able to call in faster is nice. Stand fast. Make this commander. Oh man. The make <laughs> this commander. Okay. At least it's really a few uh, grammatical and otherwise errors in these patch notes, but we'll soldier on. The following change has been made. Replaced with sapper flamethrowers. Okay. So stand fast was the one in Royal Engineers, which would automatically allow emplacements to repair themselves just by activating it, which re did receive nerfs in the last patch, but it looks like that's getting, getting rid of it altogether and adding in another command with sapper flamethrowers. So it's kind of nice to have another option to get a flamethrower as the Brits, because flamethrowers are so important in this match this game. Remarked held down to increase the usability of this ability. Following changes have been made. Cast time from 15 to 7.5 seconds, so halving the cast time. Offensive bonuses removed. So I suppose the offensive bonuses would be the range. I'm not sure if they count range. I think it would increase range by 20% yeah I think it was 20% so I'm not sure about that but it would have like a rate of fire bonus as well so that's definitely gone but it also has a defensive bonus which is like a received damage maybe uh, it's like 30% reduced received damage something like that so Maybe we'll see some more hold down usage. It's not in that many commanders, and the commanders that are in aren't that popular. Perhaps the one with the elephants and the command tank sees a little bit of use in team games, so maybe that will be a bit more uh, used. Used anyway. Elite troops damage is being greatly reduced on stun grenades to solidify their role as a stun platform. Model 24 stun grenade damage from 40 to 5. Yeah, stun grenades are so broken. So broken. They cost almost nothing. 40 damage. And I'm pretty sure Mr. Smith said it's 40 damage in the entire AoE. So with most grenades, in the center they'll do 40 damage. But at the edge they might do 20. Stun grenade stun grenades 40 the whole the whole radius. So yeah, anyway, now they're going to five, so who cares? <laughs> Still, this is yeah, very good change because they're so cheap, so spammable, and if one model gets hit, they're basically impossible to dodge. And if one model gets hit, the whole squad gets stunned. So uh glad to see that change. Population changes. Okay, a lot of units are getting their population changed. I think the the idea behind this is they're looking at the late game performance of a unit and costing the unit's population according to that. So, you know, he thinks like heavy tanks generally around 20, but then, you know, something like a, some of these support vehicles are obviously much less valuable in the late game. And there's no real point in costing them expensive in the early game just to impact your uh, manpower income for the first bit of the game. If everything is costed so that it's relevant performance-wise in the late game to occupy your army supply, then that's probably how it should be done. So a lot of changes to these things. Probably the most relevant ones, pack and Grenadiers. Also, uh, Empires. I think they're coming down from 10 maybe but yeah a lot of changes it's probably going to be quite helpful for OKW because at the moment they are they do struggle to field uh, a lot of units in the late game because a lot of their things were over costed so yeah and also pack 40 it used to cost one more, but then they nerfed target weak points. So now I feel like it can uh, go down to the same cost since target weak point got nerfed at the same time. 
But yeah, this this isn't a change, right? T34 semi six was always ten. I think they wanted to increase it, but then they didn't. And maybe that was increased in the uh, leak patch notes. Yeah, I think they wanted to increase it to twelve, but its performance is not twelve. It is pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's fine. T34 semi six, I think, is in a pretty reasonable position at the moment, but does not deserve to go up to twelve supply. Anyway, continuing onwards, mortar changes. Nearly all indirect fire platforms are receiving a tuning pass to decrease lethality across the board. Move these units further into their role as support platforms. In addition, mortars are becoming stronger anti-garrison tools to discourage static play and improve th flow throughout the match. Finally, mortar barrage range bonuses at veterancy have been replaced by bonuses to barrage accuracy to promote dynamic mortar play that involves repositioning mortars into optimal positions and makes RT spam a higher risk strategy. They, they sound like somewhat uh, valiant goals to try and achieve with the game. Let's see how they go about it. Damage to enemies in yellow cover decreased from 1 to 0 0.9. This means mortars are no longer going to be able to one shot squads if they're in light cover. So yeah, that's probably. I think this is a probably a reasonable change. Damage to garrisons increased from 0.25 to 0.5, so that's a big change. Building AOE damage equalized to one at all range. Duh. I have to. I I have to test how this works. I, these these mortar changes. Yeah. Okay. So this is a big change. Mortars are going to do twice as much to units and buildings now. But then I'm worried that they're going to do... same amount of damage. So they're going to do 40 damage per hit to every unit inside a building. AOE damage multiplier decreased from 0.1 to 0.85. So is this versus buildings? Or is this just out in the open? Maybe this is versus buildings. So instead of doing like 40 damage, we're we doing 0.85 times 40, whatever that is. So instead of taking two shots to kill a squad in a building, we'll be three, three more shells and the squad inside a building will die. That's my understanding from these changes which is quite fast this is actually a very big change to buildings which have been a big feature of co throughout the uh, years and this is like a really substantial change to be making right at the end of the game's life cycle marked this is obviously the problem water here problem the most problem water receiving adjustments to its rate of fire to discourage builds of multiple mortar squads and reduce the rate they can push back enemy assaults. Barrage reload increased by 1.25 seconds. That doesn't matter too much. Re reload from 4 to 6. I suppose this is auto fire reload. So that's a pretty big, pretty big nerf to its rate of fire. But his rate of fire was crazy, that's why people called it the turbo mortar. Vet 3 range bonus replaced by 20% increase to barrage accuracy. So barrage accuracy is already pretty good for mortars. I don't think this is going to be a substantial change, but removing the range bonus is a big nerf. But I think it's going to be applying to all mortars if uh, these earlier things are to be believed. And smoke barrage range changed to 85. Okay. So that's five more than the regular mortar barrage range. And I suppose that's kind of like a halfway measure. To. Because you don't get the veterancy bonus on the smoke barrage. So maybe they want you to be able to smoke barrage slightly further than auto fire. 
Oh well, it's. I mean, these seem like quite reasonable changes. It's it's very hard to imagine how changes to mortars are going to stack on top of changes to the like these changes up here. It's it's uh, quite hard for me, to, and I'm like a, I feel reasonably well versed in the game systems, but it's very hard for me to imagine how the changes are going to stack on top of each other without playing them. Mortar half track, similar to the Wehrmacht mortar, we've reduced the half track's rate of fire, so it's receiving uh, same nerfs there, but fuel costs decrease to 30. So that's that's coming down pretty decent. The the thing why mortar half tracks are even stronger than the mortars is because mortars take a while to like pack up and then reset up whenever they want to change targets outside of like they don't have a cone of fire indicator like pack outs were in the early ideas do but they do actually have like basically the same thing you just can't see it but more half tracks are so good because they just like just turn around real fast because they're a car and can instantly target a new squad so it's uh and obviously they're quite hard to kill as well being on uh, wheels quite fast and always can move them in and out you can micro them a lot faster so they're yeah, very responsive and very lethal they're uh, very strong so <sighs> yeah so they're nerfing the rate of fire that's good uh, barrage accuracy bonus removed range bonus replaced by 20 percent increase to barrage accuracy so they're moving the barrage accuracy to vet 3 and Minimum range increased from 25 to 40. So when units get really close, that, that's the problem with mortars at the moment. When units get really close to them, the mortars minimum range is actually quite small. So they're just like lobbing these super effective rounds at your squads as they're trying to, yeah. Yeah, and it really leads to a lot of wipes. Increasing the minimum range, so you're gonna to have to you're gonna to have to be a bit more. Uh, might have to micro your half tracks further away to actually fire now. So similar thing for the USF more half track, which is even a bigger problem, even more powerful than the Aussie one. Reload increased, barrage reload increased. Okay. Smoke changing to the same as the other ones, changing the same stuff, same stuff, okay, exactly the same stuff basically. 81 millimeter mortar, but they didn't change the uh, fuel cost. Maybe this is the same fuel cost as this, maybe it's already 30 fuel, I can't remember exactly. 81 millimeter mortar, so this is the USF mortar. USF mortar's range is being brought back in line with other factions' mortars. These, okay, there will be increased anti garrison capabilities, reduced rate of fire, and reduced AoE radius. Damage and price will remain the same. So, on top of all those other mortar f changes that are making mortars more anti garrison, the USF mortar is going one step further. Is this correct? So, it's going. Increasing the maximum range by to 75, so it's still five less than the other mortars, but practically you're not going to notice five range really. Reload speed increased from four to six, so same as uh, the Ost one now. Setup time increased, so because they're making it longer range, you shouldn't have to move it as frequently, so they're going to change the setup and teardown time, so that's a good idea. Damage multiplied to Garrisons increase from 0.25 to 0.5. So that, isn't that isn't that ha, is that not happening for all mortars? Is is this just for the USF mortar? I'm not sure. It's a bit confusing. But okay. Smoke barrage range changed from. Fifteen minimum to eighty-five max. 
Get three range bonus replaced by 20%. Okay, so receiving quite a lot of changes. Going to increase its range, make it more in line with other mortars, basically. Pack outer. The pack outer has been adjusted to be more affordable and effective at barraging defensive positions. Its barrage range. It, uh, has been reduced to make it more vulnerable to pushes or to attack range changed to 80. Uh, I don't know what its current auto attack range is, it's not very far. Barrage cells fired increased from 3 to 4. Manpower cost reduced to 340. Hit 3 range bonus removed. So the barrage, so they're making the barrage slightly stronger. And it doesn't say the barrage range has been changed here, but maybe it's just from the VET3 range bonus. That's the barrage range change. Yeah. Pack out, so basically nobody builds it in the first place, so. <laughs> they reduced the manpower cost, so maybe it's a little bit more effective. But uh, yeah, it's all right once you once you get those uh, explosive like heat heat shells on. It's pretty powerful. But the thing with packouts and early IG is that they can't retreat, so you do have to be careful. Like on small maps, they're quite effective because you don't really have to move them. But on large maps, where you would have to move them, they can't retreat, so they're quite vulnerable. So. Uh, yeah, no, not not that commonly used, but looks like they're going to be changing it. But you know, when you're going to have this mortar, which is going to be very similar in performance to other mortars, probably slightly even less of a unit of uh, reason to make the pack out to. Because now, you know, this used to be like quite a short range one, but if you want a longer range in direct fire, you go for the pack out of it. Now, the longer range on this, it does make it less appealing. British three inch mortar. Cost and barrage cooldown has been reduced to make the mortar pit more affordable and attractive as a source of indirect fire. Barrage weapon cooldown increased by 1.25 seconds. So I think the three inch mortar at the moment can pretty much like permanently barrage. So now they're gonna add like a little bit of a gap in the barrages. I guess that's we're doing here. Manpower cost decreased from 400 to 350, so making it more affordable, more in line with other mortars. Barrage cooldown from 40. Oh no. So is this gonna cool down? So the barrage shells are gonna land less frequently, or like more gap between the th mortar pit shells, but the barrage is gonna be. Pretty much constant shots per barrage from four to three. Okay, so the barrage is they're changing quite a few things, but the barrage is uh, they want you to use the barrage more, but they're uh, slightly nerfing its lethality. Did they change the, uh, didn't change the cost of the mortar pit. I know that that was being talked about. Cost reduction, because at the moment it's quite expensive. In terms of, uh, like, man manpower, it occupies a lot of supply. Soviet, 82mm mortar. Smoke barrage range decreased from 106 to 85 same as uh, other things, V3 range bonus, yeah, same, 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 same. 120 millimeter mortar, losing a member of its crew to make it more vulnerable to assaults and to compensate for its ability to operate at one man. So yeah, I think this is one thing that they can't change with the mods. They can't make it so that as soon as it gets down to one man, it gets decrewed. So that's reducing it to five men. Because 120 millimeter mortar is the only mortar that can operate on one man. So they're reducing the squad 
by one to compensate for that. Which is fair. I mean, God, the pack outs uh, needs three men to operate it. So it's uh, pretty bad. And uh, so VIT to 20% increase to barrage accuracy removed. So they're moving the VIT 3 accuracy bonus, VIT 2 accuracy bonus to VIT 3 and removing the VIT 3 range bonus, similar to everything else. So that's a very common theme throughout all these mortars. The IG AOE increased from 3 to 4. Okay, number of shells, number of incendiary shells decreased from four, five to four. So yeah, that's good. These these things would just obliterate some things. These incendiary shells are pretty powerful. Especially yeah, yeah, they were they were quite powerful. So it'll be fine though. I think it'll still be worth it. At four, smoke barrage being decreased so it used to be able to do it 150 now it's going down to 100 vet one range bonus now applies a 25 percent bonus to smoke barrage range only okay so they remove it from up here and then they give it to you as veterancy a little bit vet three range bonus removed vet five 20 percent scatter reduction bonus added pretty hard to get an leig to vet five so all right. Snipers are being adjusted across the board to make them more vulnerable to flanks from infantry. The aim time changes will reduce their ability to snap off a shot and soft retreat against incoming threats. To improve anti-garrison tactics, all snipers now benefit from 100% accuracy versus garrisons. Oh man, garrisons are taking a hammering in this patch. Absolute hammering. But I suppose if your snipers are becoming more vulnerable, maybe they need a benefit against garrisons. The, at the moment, the way that works is the British sniper has 100% accuracy against garrisons, but that's mainly because the access to indirect fire in the mortar pit is harder. To use than a regular mortar and their access to flamethrower on the wasp is harder than a regular flamethrower so they get 100% accuracy on their sniper so they can deal with garrisons without having to deal with those other two options which can work but they're just harder much harder to implement now every sniper is going to be 100% accuracy versus garrisons but let's see if uh, it's worth the payoff Treat received accuracy modifier from 0 0.4 to 0 0.65. So they're going to be a lot more vulnerable whilst they're retreating. Ready aim time from 1 to 1 1.5. So that it's going to take them a little bit longer. Popping off their shots. Which is actually... Probably going to be make snipers even worse against retreating squads. Because at the moment... You know, if you're trying to shoot a retreating squad, take they start to aim, but then the squad, as it crosses their path, they then have to reposition, then start the aim again, and then reposition, start the aim again, and then quite often you just don't get a shot off on a retreating squad with your sniper. So not only is this going to make them worse in regular combat, but it's going to make them basically useless, probably, at shooting at retreating squads, unless they're retreating at a direct line right Pass your sniper. Fix an issue where the Soviet sniper would be able to return to stealth fast. I think I experienced that once or twice in a game recently, but didn't really try to push the limits of that one. Anti garrison accuracy standardized to 100% for snipers. Yeah, we already talked about that. Number of units have been given additional boosts to their MGs against snipers, increasing the number of mobile counters to these units, the following units, all machine guns, now have 1.5 accuracy versus snipers. So already 
uh, what is it like the Soviet M3, the USF M20, these already have 1.5% accuracy multipliers versus snipers, but a few more things are being added, and that is the USF Stuart and Greyhound. Those Greyhound already very lethal, it'll be even more lethal than Stuart. All right, it's just to their MGs though, it's not to the main guns against snipers, but MGs are what are best at getting consistent damage on snipers as they retreat. So it's probably the most important thing. AC, T70, T70, wow. T70's gonna kind of kill snipers real fast now. Puma, 222 armored car. Yeah, 222. Actually, at the moment, it has a penalty against snipers. It's got a 0.75 accuracy because they thought it was killing snipers too fast. Looks like they're, <laughs> they're doubling it. So, it's, so all these are going to kill snipers really quickly now. I'm pretty sure, especially with the retreat retreat uh, accuracy modifier. The snipers are going to be damn hard to keep alive. Panthers. Both Panthers are being standardized to or in reload and accuracy to improve performance. The health bonus that VET2 has been shifted to the unit's stock performance to improve its survivability against tank destroyers, now possibly in its best spot yet. And bold, they boldened now possibly in its best spot yet. They're feeling they're feeling good about these Panther changes already. So VET VET. Panther fuel cost from 175 to 185, so it's going up to the same price as the OKW one, I guess. Fire accuracy increased from uh, 0 0.03 to 0.035. Health increased from 800 to 960. Front armor reduced to 260. Vet 2 health bonus base by armor bonus so it used to be previous to the current patch of vet 2 you will gain plus health and plus armor they removed the, the plus armor in vet 2 because they thought with the last changes maybe it'd be too op but nobody ever really used them so now they're moving the health bonus that was previously a vet 2 to stock and then adding this back to like it was at VET2. So now that the side skirts still have some functional re relevance in their game. Because otherwise you gain armored skirts and you gain nothing at VET2 and it'll be kind of stupid. So, all right. But yeah, frontal armor reduced by a decent chunk. I think previously its frontal armor was uh, maybe 320. I'd, I'd look this up on stat.co2.hu at the moment, but site is down so uh, we can't do that at the moment so it's pretty decent um reduction in the frontal armor but i think they did calculations like time average time to kill and uh kind of like worked it out to be uh net positive oh my god Rear armor reduced from 110 to 90. Oh my god. Is there, is there any tank? I suppose 110 at a far range at T34 could bounce that, right? Standard T34, but. Panther, yeah, okay. This is. It's going to be interesting. I. This is another one that's receiving so many changes, it's kind of hard to judge its performance without playing with it first. For Mark 222 is receiving a cost and armor adjustment to make it more viable early mid game and easier to replace in later stages should it be destroyed. Manpower cost reduced to 200. Frontal armor increased from 9 to 14. That is a huge increase in frontal armor. Rear armor increased from 4.5 to 7. This is this is not the, the 222 changes that I was looking for. I wanted 
222 to have uh, better anti-infantry firepower but leave the armor and uh, health the way it is because I feel like it's kind of nice that you can kind of hold the 222 off with just rifle fire for the first few minutes if you're trying to stretch to something that can then counter it a little bit later but that that strategy you know should work if you're like cheeky and manage to ambush it or you take good engagements maybe if you're inside a building or something but that if you're not in those kind of situations 2 to 2 should do a lot more damage so now they're just making it more tanky so you can just soak up more bullets so in in some this is this will be all right I, I, don't, I don't like i don't like this change i prefer it to be more lethal and keep the same amount of armor personally i suppose this will mean that 222 now has to be repaired less this should spend more time on the battlefield early to make it uh more effective but yeah it's not a change that i want i want it kind of the other way around panzer grenadiers are being given given increased versatility cheaper and more accurate panzer shrek will allow an alternative to the pack 40 that can support assaults with smoke grenades they've got smoke grenades now excuse me pan shrek upgrade munitions cost reduced from 120 to 100 so basically nobody is building panda tricks so maybe this small cost decrease will boost them and far accuracy increased from 0 0.0 0 0.028 to 0 0.032 so a small boost with their far accuracy so it should make kiting panda tricks a little bit harder because uh, those long range shots, if you're trying to kite them with your tank at long range, Panzer will now have a higher chance of shooting you. So, you know, Panzer Green is uh, basically almost never used by anyone. Maybe now they have a bit more uh, utility. Brumbeer is. Uh, having its scatter increased to reduce its squad wiping potential and allow it to better push back multiple squads grouped together so they're nerfing its scatter because at the moment if you attack ground with the broom bear pretty much lands exactly where you do and it's got really good aoe on its damage so it can quite often just one shot squads so now they're going to make a bit more of a rng cannon Especially like close range. That's quite a big quite a big scatter nerf close range. Bunker Buster V1 ability scatter from from previous values to similar to new values but even more scatter close range. Okay. Command Panzer four, we are reducing this this is a fine change from bears a bit if you see it in the ultimate team tournament it's quite popular because you get out quite early still quite good against tanks it has a decent penetration on it still i think uh one of the changes that was being floated around before is actually decreasing its penetration as well but looks like they didn't do that they're just decreasing its lethality against infantry a little bit by making it a bit more rng prone command p4 we're reducing the bonus of the command panzer IV's aura to decrease its potency around units such as the Stug and Panther that are either incredibly effective, cost effective with the increased durability or have a high durability to begin with. So yeah, once again from the Ultimate Team Tournament, at the moment the meta is your two Stugs and a command tank and that makes Stugs take five shots to kill where they're already super cost effective well we might begin to that soon and now with the 10 percent bonus because strugs don't have 640 health they've got 560 health i think this will leave them on four shots to kill with the command tank aura i think that's what they're aiming for similar the panther now that it gets the 960 health from the start they need to reduce the command tank aura on the panther otherwise the panther is going to be 
just bonkers durable. But still at 10%, it's going to mean rocket artillery, like one rocket shell is not just going to instantly wipe an infantry squad. So still has utility at 10%. And it's still most medium tanks are still going to take that extra one shot to kill. So it's still, still relevant, but uh, slightly less cancerous. <laughs> Strug, and yeah, that I mean the, the yeah. Strug, we feel Strug's strong DPSC damage per second curve. I suppose that is is disproportionate to its cost. This combination of high rate of fire, strong armor, make the unit overperform in certain situations, especially when produced in numbers. To improve counterplay, following changes have been made. Reload delay at VET zero increased by 1.5. So the VET zero performance is getting nerfed. Remember, Strug does get very uh, strong reload bonuses. And we'll check the uh, pop cap as well. I they probably should have changed this pop. Yeah, Strug goes to 10. Didn't mention that before, but I think at the moment it's 8 just like stupidly underpriced but now it's going to be the same as t 3476 so that's reasonable but it meant that you could build like so many strugs in the late game which we saw in the ultimate team tournament and you could just like easily overwhelm your opponents so very uh probably quite reasonable changes didn't you know they didn't increase its cost it's still going to be 90 fuel is it which is still pretty cheap so uh i think it's pretty reasonable i think one of the other changes being floated was decreasing the reload bonuses with fear and see but this is a fine fine choice I, I feel soviet sniper they didn't include this in the uh previous sniper notes but soviet sniper is becoming a one man slash woman squad similar to the vermacht and British snipers to allow more counter sniper play from uh, from Mac players and reduce frustrating misses from the Soviet sniper. Squad size reduced from two to one. So this is a huge change. There have been a two man slash woman squad for uh, the entire history of the game. So this is a. Uh, Obviously these were very uh, highly complained about quite kind of at the start of this patch, but Soviet sniper builds have kind of fallen out of popularity. I've been trying uh, some with tank hunters, but I, I don't think it's like a terribly good build, honestly, but especially with all the other Soviet sniper changes coming along, it's, it's going to be quite, well, Soviet snipers are going to be just completely different. With camouflage, it's going down probably to the same as the Vermark camouflage. Hit points, yeah, they used to be 64 per model. So they could be one shot by mortars. Now they're going to 82, same as other snipers. Population increased from 8 to 9. Okay. Ready aim time changed. Yeah, we covered that already. Cooldown changed. I imagine this is a pretty big cooldown. Uh, Decrease. Reload duration decreased from 5 to 4.5. Reload frequency increased from 4 to 9. So I guess, I guess now you can shoot 9 shots before having to reload. Is uh, my understanding of this. So you shouldn't have to reload as frequently so you should be able to shoot um, yeah quite quite a lot faster so yeah i imagine they're going to make this performance similar to the vermark one can't remember the exact stats and obviously i can't look them up but I imagine that's what they're doing here and it, it doesn't need to shoot quite as fast as the vermark one because it's facing off against four and five model squads rather than typically five and six for allies Out of cover, camouflage decloak time increased by two seconds. So this means you'll be able to move from 
cover to cover without getting revealed. Like at the moment, you just can't sneak between cover with the Soviet sniper. It just constantly gets revealed. So it's going to be able to move from cover to cover like the other snipers can. Katusha, reload time between salvos have been increased to give more time for players to react to Katusha volleys. Reload time increased from 2.5 to 3, so you're going to have half a second longer to retreat your squad after that first volley of rockets comes through. Pretty minor change, but a lot of Katushas are very, very popular in like 4v4s and whatnot, so this is going to make them just ever so slightly worse. UBSH conscripts are now only upgraded with two per squad to reduce their close range lethality, improve counterplay and increase reaction time for the opposing player. PBH conscript, PBSH conscripts are so OP at the moment. So uh, I'm glad to see this change, but um, I think they'll still be uh, a pretty viable option, honestly. Uh, only two. But we'll have to wait and see. Some some other people were saying maybe they should increase the weapon price instead, and I think that's also would have been a reasonable change. Maybe increase it to something like seventy. From uh, I think it's forty at the moment. It probably would have been a fine change as well. Su seventy six is having its range penetration reduced and accuracy increased. This will make the Su seventy six more suited towards countering lightning medium vehicles, but less effective against heavy tanks. So penetration reduced by some amount. Still going to be able to penetrate most medium tanks. Or almost. Far range. I think uh, Panzer IV is 160 armor. Maybe, maybe it's a little bit higher in there. OKW1 is 230. So it's it's going to struggle against the the OKW Panzer IV because you're not going to try and shoot it close range with the SU-76. But the accuracy is being increased, so it's going to be more accurate against well, because like against heavy targets, the accuracy doesn't really matter, right? Because the target size of a heavy tank is so big that you're just going to hit it. So this is going to, yeah, it is, it's going to make it less effective against heavy tanks, which are more heavily armoured, more effect, more effective against medium and light tanks, which are less heavily armoured, but small target size, so the accuracy is going to matter more. So probably pretty good changes. Probably also could have added like a 20 munitions cost to its barrage as well, which would have been nice, but so I think these are reasonable changes. It's ready five focus sights. S activation bonus applies with a delay of five seconds, so you're going to activate it. One, two, three, four, five. Now you get sight. Uh, I don't, don't really like that change. <laughs> Speed penalties remain for five seconds after deactivation. I think they, I don't know. Some people will complain about these 285 and uh, then it looks like they're trying to nerf this a little bit. Probably would be fine with, I don't know, I think maybe they should have just gone with one or the other, but it's not a major change anyway. PTRS all variants, we are lowering the PTRS deflection damage to reduce the impact against heavily armored vehicles when attacking from the front, deflection damage reduced from 20 to 10. So yeah, I think at the moment PTRSs do 40 damage if they penetrate. And it didn't make sense to me at the time, but they increased the deflection damage. I think it used to be 7 maybe. They increased it to 20 because they wanted to make them more viable against heavy tanks for some reason. It, it did not make any sense. Why would this like anti-tank rifle have such good deflection damage against a heavily armored tank it didn't make any sense and it made them over overperform so yeah this is a change i'm happy to see it's going to make them you know less effective against medium tanks and heavier basically so that's a welcome change guards are, as you know 
pretty uh, overperforming a little bit and we might be getting to that soon. Penal battalions, given that the AT satchel no longer cancels when the unit exit its range, we are reducing the range of its activation. Target is at satchel charge range reduced from 10 to 5. You, Oh my god, you are going to have to get so close to the enemy tank to actually activate this. That's crazy. Nobody really uses AT penals anyway. I don't think this was really necessary. I think they probably could have just reduced the damage of it by like 100. It would have been a better change. Guards are having their timing adjusted for a CP increase due to their over effectiveness against a wide range of targets at the time they hit the field. Their population is also being increased to match other elite squads. So, your population going. I think Obers are still maybe at 10. So, it's still going to be a little bit cheaper than Obers, but uh, going up in population. Command point requirements go from two to three. So they're going to be hitting the field later. And in fact, this is going to make them not really viable as a counter to the 222. I think you'll be a bit late in uh, getting your guards out to counter 222, which is actually a, a little bit worrying given how much more durable it's going to be against uh, rifle fire. So. Uh, but, you know, this means guards are going to come onto the field later. They're going to start vetting up later. So they should be a little bit less overwhelming. And, yeah, you can't spam quite as many of them because they're going up in supply. It's, it's, yeah, we'll have to see how this work, works out with the revised 222. It might not be the best change. ISU is receiving a slight increase in scatter to lower its potency against infantry at medium and far range. So they're just changing the scatters to scatter more. I think at the moment the ISU is like, I think it's in a pretty reasonable spot. But against squads, like it doesn't one shot hit them quite as much as it used to. But basically every shot will actually hit the squad and most likely force a retreat so looks like they're going to make it now scatter a little bit more so maybe it misses the squads maybe they don't have to retreat for every shot it makes i know a lot of changes were floated about the icu but overall i don't think it needed uh, much nerfing il2 loiter here's the one everyone's waiting for damage from five to three so previously before the patch was one plane doing eight then it went to two planes doing 10. Now it's going to two planes doing three. So a pretty, uh, pretty big damage nerf overall. Is it shouldn't wipe, well, I don't think it is possible now for it to wipe a full health squad. So that's uh, good. Loiter time for each plane reduced by three seconds. So maybe this is going to overall decrease the duration of the ability slightly, which is okay because it lasts a bloody long time anyway. Tank Hunters. To help make this commander applicable in a larger variety of situations, following change has been made. Replace ML20 with the B4. You know, I have been playing a lot of Tank Hunters these last uh, few days, if you caught me on stream. And, you know, I have built the ML20 a few times. Sometimes you, f sometimes I felt like I, I wanted the constant ML20 fire. But other times I did feel like, man, I just kind of just want one, one big shot on this, like, particular area. So uh, I'm not too concerned with this change either way. Looks like they just wanted to shoehorn the B4 into another commander since they made it. But B4 is, you know, it's very, uh, very RNG. Now it's a, that one. We'll see how it goes. I'll be I'll be playing with it for sure. Starting resources from ten to five. So yeah, they're they're changing a lot of things around truck timing. To uh, overall, I think before you just get started in this, the, the idea is to make the flak half track come five fuel later, but to not 
to actually make the looks come like a tiny bit faster. So uh, I think that's the overall goal. Looks really is flame grenade now requires any completed HQ building. So the argument for changing this was that oh, Okie okay, doesn't have access to a flamethrower, so they need flame grenades to be able to have an early counter to buildings. But nobody ever, I'd say 95% of the flame grenades used before a tech structure was put up were on a squad, maybe in like heavy or light cover, just somewhere on the map to win an early engagement to get more map control. Never used basically in the early game to counter buildings. It was a very disingenuous region, so I'm actually quite happy about this change. And that is gonna it is gonna slightly tone down OKW's like early game, like, oh I'm just gonna kill you with all my stuff early game and you're gonna have a real struggle to claw your way back in. Concussion grenades have been adjusted, so same as the uh, stun grenades, except they, they did less damage at the start anyway. Sturm Tiger stun duration decreased. What is what are they doing? Sturm Tiger's trash, man. Just leave it alone. Stop nerfing the Sturm Tiger, please. <laughs> Uh, mechanized Regiment HQ is having its fuel costs slightly lowered, so yeah. To make our back ticking a more viable option. So yeah, they decreased the starting fuel by 5, but then they decreased the Mechanized Regiment cost by 5. So you can, you know, back tick if you want to get a, maybe a walking Stuka in the late game, make it a little bit more affordable. But yeah, it's going to have the exact same fuel timing to get your looks out still. Okay, uh, Soviets had this a, like quite a while ago, where tier 1 and tier 2 used to cost a lot more. But then they reduced Soviet starting fuel and the cost of tier 1 and tier 2 to make it uh, more viable to be able to access all your tech. It's kind of happened throughout for Aussie as well with their tier 4, the way they've structured that to make uh, teching more viable just yeah just making tech all your stages of tech having access to all your units a more viable option for all factions which is nice looks as having its build time reduced to give the unit more shock value upon arrival so i think this is basically just reverting the changes that happened in the last patch okay that's fine because remember in the last patch they also reduced its moving accuracy or something. Or, yeah, something like that. The uh, flak half track is having its suppression reduced by half. I've heard from through the grapevine testing of this that it's actually doesn't hasn't made that much of an impact. So even though half looks like a big change, I hear that it's not actually uh in, in playtesting it doesn't actually feel that bad. Concealment smoke increased from 25.15 to 35.25. Increasing the get out of jail free smoke. Fair enough. Number of British upgrades have been adjusted in their cost to better reflect their current value. Research weapon racks Manpower cost reduced from 150 to 100. Research weapon racks fuel cost increased, so they're decreasing the manpower, increasing the fuel. Gonna make weapon racks more expensive. Gonna delay your tanks more if you decide to go for weapon racks. Bolster manpower cost reduced from, okay, it's getting reduced as well. And bolster fuel going up to 40. Oh man, they're, they're really uh, delaying these upgrades to your uh, Tommies. Bolster infantry squads no longer applies to the AT sections. So that's also an interesting nerf. They're, quite, they're very popular in the current meta game because well, their, their anti-infantry at five men is actually quite powerful still. They have the access to the grenade, which is also going to receive a change, I'm pretty sure. 
So yeah, they're, they're delaying the tech timing of these weapon racks and bolster. Because, you know, you can't... You can have manpower at any stage of the game, but fuel... Fuel requires territory control and uh, game time. Anyway, Tommy's infantry section's capture rate has been adjusted to match other squads. They used to have a 1.2 times capture bonus. So that's being removed. Used to be because, you know, they're so expensive. You were generally one squad down, so you needed the extra capture bonus to not completely fall behind the territory. But that's not really the case anymore, so they're just removing it. Oh, 1.25 times. Yes, similar. Close. Bit to received accuracy bonus decreased 0.78 to 0.88. That is a big nerf to their received accuracy bonus of VET 2. 10%. That's a big nerf. VET 3 received accuracy bonus of point. Oh, okay. So they're moving it, moving some of the received accuracy bonus from VET 2 to VET 3. So there's not going to be quite such a big power spike when they hit VET 2. All right. Breeding guns are being adjusted to be less potent at range, but their price is being reduced to match their new performance. So not only are they nerfing the timing on brands, but they're also nerfing the brands themselves. Sappers now use the same Tommy Bren. They used to have a different Bren with, with like longer burst length or something perhaps. Made their Brens better. It was very confusing in the old days. There were three Brens. It was like the Tommy Bren, the Sapper Bren and the Commando Bren. Now it'll just be the Tommy Bren and the Commando Bren. Make it a bit less confusing. That's fine. So the cost is being reduced from 60 to 45. Accuracy is being reduced mainly like mid and long range, same accuracy and close. And mid range is being reduced to, from 28 to 25. So yeah, they're getting less accuracy, but their cost is going down, but they're also going to arrive later. So, you know, Vet 3 Tommies with double brands was a very unpleasant thing to play against. So uh, hopefully they're a bit more reasonable now. Vets are receiving a slight boost in the accuracy to help deter vehicles at range. Accuracy increased from 0.25 to 0.28. Yeah, the accuracy on Pets at the moment is atrocious. This is kind of following in the Panzerstreck buff that we saw for Panzergrenadiers earlier. So I think that I think it's all right. I think it's reasonable buff heavy sap upgrade is having its price reduced to better reflect its performance its price <laughs> heavy sapper goes from six seventy to 60. that's fine i think they were talking about slightly increasing the heavy sapper repair speed again as well after the nurse it received last time but it looks like that change didn't make it through vickers heavy machine gun Cost reduced to 260 from 280, I think. So a pretty minor buff there. Build time increased by four seconds. So perhaps this is to counter the cost reduction. If you want to go like Tommy, 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 or Tommy, Tommy machine gun, now it comes a little bit slower to compensate for the reduced cost. Bit two now provides a 20% bonus to suppression. Okay, yeah, the Vickers suppression isn't that strong, so this is probably a reasonable change. Bit 1 garrison range and sight bonus reduced from 25% to 15%. So they're nerfing the Vet 1 a little bit, but adding a Vet 2 bonus. Should make the Vickers overall more, pe more appealing, I think. Especially now that garrisons are getting nerfed, you know, you probably want to put it outside of a garrison more, so having the suppression... It too will be quite nice. Boys, anti tank sections can no longer upgrade med kits and pyro supplies, so they're getting hammered. 
not only can they not go to five men, but now they can't get med kits. And the AT range is going from 20 to 15. Yeah, the AT nade range was so far. Now 15, I think that's the same as the Panzerfaust now, I think. So it's a reasonable change. This might, there's not having access to medics, med kits might be a bit too much on top of the five man change as well. Not sure if they'll see use after that, honestly. Universal Carrier is having its price and armor adjusted. These changes will add choice to delay tech to field a strong early game unit, but also allow small arms to penetrate the vehicle more frequently, increasing counterplay. This is kind of the opposite of what's happening to the 222, which is going down in cost going up in armor <laughs> hit points increased from 200 to 240 cost changed from 260 manpower to 200 manpower and 10 fuel adding 10 fuel to it so it's going to delay your tech a little bit front armor reduced rear armor reduced so i imagine these armor values and health values works out to be overall a similar durability against small arms but you penetrate more reliably, meaning it has to spend more time repaired if it takes da more, more time repairing if it takes damage. So if you do damage it, it has to spend more time off the battlefield. Wasp upgrade costs increased and wasp range reduced. So the wasp is quite popular at the moment. So it looks like they're nerfing that a little bit. I don't think that was really necessary. But yeah, the UC, if, if it's well micro, it's kind of similar to the Sniper. You just can't get a Faust on it. You just can never kill it and bleed you like crazy. It's very annoying to face in the early game. But should, I think it should be reasonable. I'm not sure. Not sure, though. This is, you know, Brits are receiving a lot of changes here. M3 resupply half track. Weapon drops now require research before deployment. Basically, nobody's ever going to use this now. It's a, it's, it's a shame. Maybe if they decrease its cost now, its fuel cost, maybe people would make it still. Cromwell. The f Cromwell is having its cost reduced to better reflect its performance cost from 120 to 110. You know, Panzer IV has gone down in cost, fuel cost recently. As for is just overshadow, overshadowing the Cromwell quite quite heavily. The fuel cost decreased by 10 on Cromwell. It's going to make maybe rushing the Cromwell slightly more appealing. I know that the current meta is more like don't rush a medium tank, go for your troop upgrades, make your squad really OP, and get some tanks out after that. Maybe we're going to see a return to the more old style of meta where you've rushed out of Cromwell all the time. AC tree shot is once again an aimed ability okay. mm, not sure what that exactly means retreating aim or well, reading aim time increased from 1.5 to 2 bar accuracy increased from 0.3 to 0.35 speed horizontal from 4 40 to 60 speed vertical from I'm not sure what this means does this mean you're gonna to have to like skill shot it maybe it does I'm not sure I think previously the way that worked is you had to be stationary for the tree shot to work you couldn't like activate it whilst moving and like chase a squad whilst tree shotting it but yeah I'll have to test that out I'm not sure but this this ability was very strong especially now that it comes at vet zero it's uh, quite a headache Centaur scatter is being increased to reduce the centaur's offensive capabilities and ability to wipe units even on retreat. Scatter. So yeah, they increased its speed last patch. And you know, centaur has been very popular, but I didn't feel like it was that overperforming, except for 20mm straight from fire's vet one ability. 
now is a minimum traverse of 15 meters so at the moment what you do with the vet vulnerability is do it on a squad but do it for the minimum range and it's, it's almost a guarantee wipe so they're making the minimum range longer so that you can get out of the uh, ability without losing your squad but its cost is being reduced as well so instead of being a one guaranteed one click wipe for 50 it's going to a possible one click wipe for 30 which is though those are the kind of changes you generally want to see right stun duration reduced from five to three on the avre same as the sturm tiger whatever who cares nobody makes it six pounder is having its bonus against heavy vehicles removed it will still be capable of reliably striking light vehicles but will no longer have guaranteed chance to hit tanks 50 percent accuracy bonus now only applies to light vehicles so yeah what they do with the, the six pounder has a 50 percent accuracy bonus against vehicles because brits don't have any tank grenades so they're like okay we need to make the six pounder guaranteed to hit stuff but now they're making it only guaranteed to hit light vehicles which are probably the most problematic for the six pounder because you know they're more in the, in the early game you're more likely to flank with the light vehicle wipe the six pounder win the game you know whereas in the mid game it's more risky to flank with a medium tank so this is probably this is probably a fine change just means the six pounder will now sometimes miss medium medium and heavy tanks at uh, close to max range instead of just being guaranteed it's making it you know still keeping some of the bonus because brits don't have snares which is against the most important thing like vehicles but turning it down in its uh, late game performance to improve counterplay the 50 cal mortar sprint machine machine gun sprint oh my god that that did my brain in right there is being removed from vet one so it's got sprint just like the maxim had which got removed from maxim because it people thought it was broken vet one now increases suppression by a multiplier of 1.1 so they're decreasing its base suppression because at the moment the 50 cal is extremely good probably the best machine gun they're decreasing its vet one or vet zero performance and adding it back at vet one and removing sprint i think that's overall a pretty reasonable change p47 rocket attack damage from 80 to 65 at the moment this thing is extremely lethal against tanks they're turning it down by a little bit i think it'll still be worth it at this cost but yeah not just bonkers the M8 is having its damage lowered to make it less effective against vehicles. Its performance against infantry will remain unaffected. Damage from 60 to 40. So at the moment, the Greyhound has a damage modifier against infantry to make it do 40 damage per hit already because it was too lethal before and it was doing 60 per hit. So yeah, they're decreasing its performance against vehicles, so it should be easy to counter with things like the 222, and the Puma, and the AoE is changed. Yeah, and this is what I was saying. AoE was previously already toned down to 40. There's changing the AoE around so it all works correctly. Jackson, we are removing the M36's extra sight bonuses and slightly reducing its range, Jackson will still be an effective tank destroyer due to its high mobility, penetration, and damage. Range from 60 to 55, so a small range nerf. Now going to be outranged by things like the Yak Panzer. So it should. And the Yak Panzer already had a pretty reasonable matchup against the Jackson, I feel, because of its small target size. But the sight reduction, I'm pretty happy to see that. Every tank in the game, well, almost every tank in the game has a 35 sight range. Jackson had it. Previously, earlier patches, they added sight to the Jackson to make it more viable. 
because it was you know at 480 health it was very vulnerable so it needed a little bit more sight so you could kind of use it a little bit more effectively so now they've added the health in they're removing the sight again so that's fine and uh yeah jackson was due enough it'll be interesting to see if the five range makes a big difference or not but the sight sight will definitely make a difference and uh probably for the better well that was a long video guys a lot of changes I think uh, a lot of these quite positive changes definitely very worried I'm very worried about these mortar changes and like the mortar anti-garrison changes these worry me quite a lot so these could uh, be a, a big problem this game but I think overall the rest of the changes are looking pretty uh, pretty juicy so uh, yeah we'll have to do some uh, preview mod games and uh, give these bad boys a hoon thanks for watching and uh, i'll keep you updated with any changes to this peace